Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Ahlan wa sahlan guys I hope you guys are having a fantastic day Enjoying yourselves Welcome my people Hope the sound is working Hope everything is working This is Ramadan guys Ramadan Mubarak to all of you guys Hope you guys are enjoying the fa- fasting and taraweeh May Allah barak on you Okay so this looks a bit dark I'm going to try to Put this a bit up. That's a bit. Right, so welcome guys. And timings have changed because my talks and because of all sorts. So I do apologize for that. Hopefully, uh, Sundays might be the best time for me to do these live streams. Sundays this time. Inshallah. Inshallah. So welcome everybody. Welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ihsan wa alaikum assalam. Only Ramadan related questions allowed. I'm going to give priority to Ramadan related questions because I'm only going to be on for about an hour or so. So it's only going to be Ramadan related questions, uh, inshallah. Um, unless it's something really serious and very important that someone has, then inshallah I'll try to answer that. But if it's just some random information that you want to know, try to keep it to the end. If I get time, I'll answer those. Waheed, mashallah, Waheed, long time, my brother. Long time, long time. I hope you're well. Hope we're going to see see each other soon, inshallah. Or at least online. Hope everything's well. Uh, SC1, alaikum assalam. How has your Ramadan fast, mashallah? My Ramadan fast has been very well. What I've been doing this uh, Ramadan, guys, I've been taking electrolytes. So in my water, I've been adding electrolytes. Drinking that, mashallah. Thirst, I don't really feel that thirsty this Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. So I think this is something if you guys are feeling like, you know, sometimes when you drink too much water at Seri time and then you sleep after Seri and then you feel like going toilet halfway through your sleep. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I haven't, got, haven't had that this, this year. So what I would suggest is get yourself some electrolytes. All right. I'll uh, take a picture of the ones that I've got. I'll put it on Telegram and you guys can get some of those or anything which, you know, if you want to just add some, you know, Celtic salt or Himalayan salt to some water, mix it, put some lemon or lime in there. That also helps as well. Yeah, I've actually tried that. That works good, mashallah. And uh, just, you know, I would say just eat healthy. Do not eat junk food because junk food will most likely make you th- th- very thirsty because of the salt content and will, um, will, will cause you to probably have lots of bad stomach or, I don't know, lethargic laziness as well. And I've been working on the Quran summary. So I've actually what I've been doing is I've actually been writing. So what I do is with the Quran summaries, I get the surah and then I write the whole surah up in my own translation. Right. So I go through each ayah and then I try to come out with an easy, easily understandable translation. Um, and that requires me sometimes to have to look back and forth at tafsirs, see how they explained it, see which explanation is the one that's going to fit best with them. And then I just put them into order and that's what I do really. And then, so it takes me a long time. Like I went through Surah Yusuf, I've, I've completed it all, translation of it. Now I'm simply going through edit, editing it. And the next stage is going to be me writing it up. So remember the Surah Hud one where I showed you the whole like drawing and you guys can see that. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be drawing that. So I just finished right now, just before I actually started the live stream, I actually finished Surah Ra'd, writing it up. And I would definitely, you know, definitely encourage any of you guys who are students of knowledge, learning Quran, and understanding of it, or your ulama graduated from other sides, I would definitely encourage you, take a surah of the Quran and see if you can translate it yourself, write it up. And then wherever you get stuck, check it with reputable translators, right? And see what they say, like Quran.com, they've got some good translators there. Check, Check it with those. And uh, wherever you get stuck, go to a tafsir and try to understand how the tafsir explains it. And that way you can have a better explanation of it. And honestly, it's to, for me, since I did it last year and this year as well, it's helped me a lot. Like seriously, it takes up a lot of time. Honestly, it does take up a lot of time. But it just keeps you engaged with the Quran. It lets you understand the subtleties of the words of the Quran. And you, you see a lot of repetition in surahs. You see a lot of you know, so uniqueness in each surah. So I would say definitely, um, you know, if you guys are, are going to do that, definitely, I would definitely encourage anyone who's in Quran studies would definitely be recommended to try and translate the surah on your own and from the Arabic, obviously. 
Uh, Alhamdulillah, yes, inshallah, after Ramadan, definitely inshallah, inshallah. What do the Hanafis say regarding leading Tarawi while reciting from a Musaf or device not allowed? So the Hanafis do not allow it. Yeah, so other madhabs are a bit flexible with the recitation from a Mus'haf, um, but the Hanafis do not allow it. And I've actually made a video, a video with regards to uh, reading from a Mus'haf. Uh, tarawi. Yeah, so this is a video that I've made regarding this. So you guys can check that, inshallah, out. So can you hold a Quran and read Taraweeh? There you go. When praying and baby is crying, can we pick up the child and pray Salat? Uh, so technically in Nawafil and Sunnah is okay. When Fard, if there is another person, they should not pick the baby up. But unless there's a dire need. Like the child is causing a lot of nuisance. So it's very difficult to pray with the, with, with, with the child on the side. So, so sometimes it can happen. But then it's fine. Just pick up the child. Try to make least movements as possible. And pray your salat. And every time you go down for sajda, you know, you put the child down, you do your sajda, and you pick the child up. So that would be, there'd be room for that. But this is only if, like, it's very difficult to be able to do anything else. I've heard Mashaikh say that the one who does not memorize the Quran is not a student of knowledge. Is this reliable? I don't know. I've never heard that before. Wallahu alam. What if someone prayed behind someone reciting from a device, but they were not aware until yes. So if, if there is someone else, that is, there's 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 scope for that. If you're praying behind someone who believes in their fiqh that this is considered to be permissible and it's a valid fiqh, then it's permissible. Just like the ruling with regards to praying behind. A Shafi'i or a Maliki, and they do certain things which uh, go against the Hanafi Salat. Um, then this would be there'd be some permissibility there, scope for it. Yeah. So when it comes to praying behind other madhabs, there is a lot of scope behind that. Now, if a person obviously feels uncomfortable praying behind someone else who is of a different madhab, and that person does things which um, you know that person not comfortable with, then obviously the the always the best solution would be for them to pray somewhere else. Oh yeah, I think I did I forget to. Okay, oh, one second, guys. I'm gonna get my phone to do uh, Insta. Yeah, so just give me a second. Inshallah, I will be back. I can actually still talk to you from here. I'll see how long. So I just left my phone. I'm just gonna get my phone, and then I can basically do Insta with you guys. This is the benefit of having a mic that can that you can go around the whole house with. So inshallah. Hope you guys have been having a wonderful Ramadan. Enjoy yourselves. Alhamdulillah. Yesterday I wanted to do a live stream, but the problem was I had a talk and I had to leave early for that talk because it was quite, it was, it was a bit of a distance. So this is why I wasn't able to. Um, I wasn't able to to do much. Okay, let's go into Instagram. Yeah, second guys yeah so the talk yesterday was about deception end of time and deception q and do you guys like the new thumbnail that i made for ramadan did you enjoy it okay all right let's put this over here <clears throat> can one wear normal niqab in ihram for less than 12 hours and give sadaqah so according to abu hanifa if you wear a niqab then you're going to have to slaughter an animal so that's the rule you'll have to slaughter an animal according to sahibain then you have the half day rule which is as long as you haven't worn it for half a day what what i would suggest is if you are going to wear niqab you can get like you can order online these kind of uh, these kind of caps where you put it on and then it allows the niqab to fall in front of your face without touching your skin. Try to get that. How's your fast going this year, Mufti? Very, very nice, mashallah. Fast is very... It's like I oh, I normally only eat twice a day anyway. So for me, it isn't really much of a difference this year. It's like I uh, just have, you know, iftar, instead of breakfast, iftar, uh, sehari. And then in the evening, just eat. And mashallah... Probably the only thing for me is probably the sleep issue, like trying to juggle the sleep. But alhamdulillah, so far it's been 
going quite well. It's just on the weekdays when I'm teaching. Um, then I've got to get up a bit early in the morning. So that's the only thing. Otherwise, yeah. Oh, how's your fast going, TMZ? Can I read Quran on my phone without wudu but touching the English translation only? So there's a difference of opinion among scholars with regards to reading the Quran on your phone. I would say if it's a translation, then there's permissibility for it. Yeah. I am expecting a child and I'm married. I'm currently purchasing a house with a conventional mortgage as renting is too expensive and I want to settle and be comfortable with my family. Is this okay? Uh, what I would suggest is speak to a scholar about your situation um, and uh, just get it checked with them, and then if they kind of give the go-ahead, then taking that option would, might be possible, inshallah. Yeah, always remember, if there is always a discussion regarding something which is differed upon amongst the scholars, always get it checked with scholars. I would say, yeah, speak to a scholar, hold them your whole situation, um, and then get it checked. Wa alaikum as Tayyib ahla wa sahlan. Welcome, I hope your umrah is going well. I tried this time mortgage, but they were too yeah, They are quite expensive. Abu Bakr wa alaikum as salam. Is it a visor that women wear with niqab? Yeah, so it's like a visor. It's like a kind of like a little cap kind of thing that comes over. Allah wa sahlan, Fresh Prince. Marhaban. Can a Hanafi follow a Shafi who holds a Mus'haf in Salah also is a ruling? So according to the Hanafis, generally, there are four positions with regards to praying behind someone of a different madhab. Four positions and you have like the extreme strict position which is no you're not allowed to pray behind a shafi you have opinion which is um absolutely yes you can pray right and then you have in between you have positions in between right you can only pray behind them as long as they fulfill all of your criteria or you can only pray behind them as long as they fulfill your faraid right so ibn abidin's was the was the fourth position uh, for the last position i mentioned the extreme, the, 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 the position I would say, which is the position of my teacher and the teachers, Sheikh Yusuf Banuri, Anusha Kashmiri, Shawal, the Dehlawi, which is you can pray behind any of the madhab so long as they are obviously acting upon their madhab. Yeah. Hassan, wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlam. Very good, my, my brother. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying yourself, having a nice, wonderful time. Mashallah, we've got 41 people on. So 20 people. Ahla wa sahlam. Welcome, people of Twitter. And uh, 20 people on uh, YouTube and one person on Facebook. How are all your fasts going? How are you guys fine? Tell me wh what's the one thing that you really enjoy in Ramadan and what's the one thing that you find difficult? Yeah, maybe you can find some way of, of kind of uh, helping each other getting through Ramadan. Alaikum as salam, Habibana, Ahla wa sahlan, Ahla wa sahlan. Which hoofs do you recommend to use? Uh, I, I uh, had. Uh, several about five or six pairs of of uh, of uh, dex shell dex shell wudu socks right so the dex shell basically is mounting socks i used to wear those and then the, after a while they wore out so i had to chuck them away right? because they were very difficult to wear that holes in them now i wear these ones called daki d-a-k-y d-a-k-y right daki, they're very strong they're very good um why would the the good thing about these socks is you can wear them for like a long period of time and they don't have like an odor or anything. With the other one, sometimes if you wear them too much, you get like an odor in them. Whether it's like sweat odor or whether it's just odor because of wearing socks for a while. So the Daki ones are very good. They're very strong. And I generally wear them in the cold because, you know, the when I walk, like for example, in some mosques or some places where the ground is cold, it, 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 stop, it, it protects my feet from, uh, from, from the insulates them. So at the moment, I wear the Daki ones. Uh, yes, inshallah. If you email me, inshallah, email, inshallah. What do Hanafi say about tar'eed, tarji in regards to tajweed? And uh, Hanafis don't really have specific rulings regarding this. Like Imam Hanifa doesn't really have any specific because these are more nuanced issues in in tajweed. Uh, so what you you'd have to do is best to speak to a tajweed teacher regarding these. Uh, alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan, zob. If leading tarawih and I'm supposed to sit after sajda, but instead I stand up into qiyam, what should I do? Then you sit back down and then you do sajda uh, sahu. Regarding reading Quran, I'm reading the Arabic, but I'm only touching the English. Um, so what, what I would do is in that situation, make sure your fingers are not touching the Arabic on your phone. 
How should one learn sarf? Is memorizing the table necessary? So sarf, I say the memorization is very important, at least for the beginner. You must memorize Arabic sarf in the beginning, understand the structure, especially if you're non-Arab. Um, I've got a series on understanding sarf, you can watch that. But definitely at least memorize you know, the basic structure of the what we call the, the Gardano. Do you have an issue with praying behind people of different madhabs? Not at all. I prayed in the Haram, I prayed in Masjid Nabawi, I prayed in Masjid Aqsa. I don't have an issue, but it sometimes feels strange because you taught one thing and doing things differently. Yeah. Like I said, if you feel uncomfortable with things, remember, it's best to kind of just, just uh, if you feel uncomfortable, abstain and pray, pray somewhere else. Do you know the little markings between ayahs in the Mus'haf? Is it obligatory to obey them like when they have to stop? Uh, yes, you should. Also, if during Qirat I make a mistake which changes the meaning to something bad, is it okay to just correct it and continue? Yes. As long as it's... So, if you make a mistake in your Qirat, yeah, you, you simply just go back, correct it and carry on. Assalamu alaikum. Can a Hanafi raise the hands for du'a kunut in witr? Uh, so Hanafis should not raise their hands in du'a kunut in witr because that's not been established in the in the uh, witr for the Hanafis. So they should avoid it. Wa alaikum assalam. Ahla wa sahlan. Fasiha. A woman has exceeded 40 days for nifas. Her last one also exceeded 40 days and her first nifas was 10 years ago and she, she can't remember. Yeah, so she uses 40 days as her. So now she's going to use 40 days. And then anything besides that is going to be istihada. If the imam is praying 10 rakats tarawih, then 3 with her after do Hanafi allow the people praying behind the imam to stand up after 3 rakats and pray one more to make it 4 rakats? I have not come across any Hanafis that have said that. No, I haven't come. Uh, according to Hanafis, the the ima the followers must follow what the imam does. He can't add extra things to the salat rakats. So he must start with the imam and he must end with the imam. Nado alaikum assalam. Hello sahlan. Welcome, TMZ. What specialization of ulum do you think is lacking? I think everything. Everything is lacking. We we have a big crisis at the moment of really good scholarship. Yeah, we just got some crazy. Social media, you have crazy people saying crazy things. And the good scholars on social media, there's very few of them. So what I would suggest is in every science, in Aqidah, in Fiqh, in Hadith, in Quran, in Tajweed, we need scholars in every, like literally our levels, imagine these kind of levels, our levels are like very, very low. We need to raise all the level numbers. It's very hard, I know. It's a very hard thing to do. Does zakat include pensions or if it's above nisab man zakat? Well, yes. So zakat includes pensions if it is what we call a a defined contribution scheme pension. Basically, it's a pension where you have control of um, where it's where it's um, invested. So you have like a fund manager and you tell them where you want it invested. If you want to know more about these things, then what I would suggest is go on Google and type in uh, 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 the ruling of pensions. IFG, right, and then you'll find Islamic finance guru have actually dealt with this in a very good way. What's the minimum amount of days one can sit for itikaf in the masjid? Uh, you can sit as long as you like, but you won't be doing the sunnah itikaf. The sunnah itikaf is full nine or ten days, the last you know, nine or ten days of Ramadan. But otherwise, nafal itikaf, you can do for one day, two days, three days. If leading tarawih and I accidentally do two rukus or three sajdas, sajda sahu. Rizwan, do you know what they use to typeset matan and sharah together, like synchronizing them together and putting dots in pages? I have no idea. No idea. Uh, you're welcome, Fasiha. What's the position on praying a salah as one rakat? Uh, Hanafis do not allow praying one rakat. I pray behind someone who forgot to do the second rakat, and then they did another one rakat and said the sahu in the method of their own madhab. So as long as in their own madhab it is considered to be allowed, then there's permissibility for it. So as long as they have done so, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Nadeem, ahla wa sahlan. Can you shed some light on the story of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi reviving a Sahabi's child from the dead during a dawat? I have no, I have no, I don't know what, what you're talking about, unfortunately. If you have uh, the narration, if you can send it to me, I'll have a check. 
I've never come across. Can a ha'idha delay her intention of Umrah despite passing? No. No. You must make intention of Miqat before Miqat. You must. Unless you are going into Miqat to another place. Like, but you're, you're not making intention for Umrah. I've sent you an email previously, but you didn't get back to me. Yes, send it again. Yeah, I do apologize, guys, if you guys have sent me emails in the past because I get literally so many messages and emails, WhatsApp messages and emails and and uh, obviously Curious Cat, so many. Uh, so what I do is I usually try to prioritize them. Yeah, and if I have ever missed. So if you ever send me a message or an email, what you have to do is after a few days, you have to remind me. Right, send it back, say remind, a reminder. At the moment, I don't have a secretary. I don't have any sort of like way of, uh, which I did have a secretary. Where I could simply have everything organized, everything organized, and I know exactly it, prioritize everything. But I don't, I don't have a software for that. Is there a software for that? I came across one Hanafi masjid who do witr in the Hanafi method, but they do kunut out loud and hands raised. Have you come across something like this before from your studies or experience? No, I haven't. Not from Hanafis. Practically, how can one themselves... Uh, so I have come across a masjid that has done something similar, but not from, a, from the Hanafi perspective. Like there's no Hanafi perspective for this. This is probably they're only doing this because I remember there was one mosque, there was an imam who used to do this. And he was basically saying majority of his followers are non-Hanafis. And it's just for them. Practically, how can one themselves raise their levels in the ulum? So what you have to do is you have to, it's not an easy thing, but you have to start from the beginning, right? So if you find yourself weak in Nahu, start from the beginning of Nahu, right? Fill in all the gaps that you have. And one of the best things to try and get yourself motivated is either have a project that you're going to do, like you gotta write something up or present something or teaching someone. These are probably the ways that you can motivate yourself. I would definitely say start from scratch. If you some people who have graduated from Adasa, what they tend to generally find is they're weak after they graduate. So what they can do, I would say, is start from scratch. Start all the books you learned from year one, year two, go over them yourself now. But this time when you go over them, you're gonna go over them really kind of trying to look for what you want. Right? So try to go over them, try to rewrite it all again, try to write it in mind maps, try to write it, I don't know, however you want you want to write it out again. But this time what's gonna happen is you're gonna have uh, uh, um, an aim you know you have this target that you want to hit Muhammad a brother mentioned that according to the four Imams Maghrib is when the sun sets and the center of the sun moves one degree below the horizon yes this is correct would you recommend listening or taking from Sheikh Akram Nadawi I now, now I know some people are going to take my statements out of context take a little snippet and put it onto uh, I don't know some some groups but look my rule regarding any scholar out there is if you are if you are someone who is learning knowledge take from other people out there take from people Sheikh Akram Nadawi has many views which many people might disagree with right and there's many things he says I disagree with as well but to totally dismiss someone and to totally cancel them out I don't think that's the right thing to do right so if you are comfortable with listening to him and you have questions, then take those questions and ask someone, ask a scholar you're, you have contact with and ask them, look, he said this, what do you think about this? That's what I would say, right? Because at the end of the day, scholars of the past had many views and we have to be able to understand what to take and what not to take. as well. If you're confused and you think, I don't know what to take from them, then don't listen to him. Simple as that. Don't listen to anyone you're not comfortable with. Right, that's the rule. It's not necessary to listen to any scholar out there. This is the rule. So, so remember that as a rule. And I know there's some people out there who are, you know, adamant that you shouldn't listen to any scholar that they disagree with. I, I'm not that of that mindset. Especially if it's like ulama and graduates and students of knowledge, I encourage them to benefit from various different types of scholars. But always keep in mind that it's just a scholar speaking. You, you listen to me, it's up to you. If you want to take from me, alhamdulillah. If you don't want to take from me, alhamdulillah. Right? I am not the flag bearer of Islam, my answers are not the, the answers which are absolutely qat'i, categorical from the, the, you know, the, the, the Sharia or Hanafi. It's, a, it's my understanding of the Hanafi school and I might, I might have my own views on certain things, which if you want to take them, you take. If you don't want to take them, that's totally up to you. So again, this is something which I would say definitely, you know, 
people should 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 bear in mind. What's your favorite iftar dish? Um, dates and fruit. I love dates and fruit at iftar time. If you ever guys ever invite me down to your house, make sure you have nice dates and you have loads of fruit, especially that watery fruit. Malin Tarawi, if I read a sajda ayah and forgot to do sajda, what should I do? Uh, so try to do it as soon as you can. And if you finish your salat, then you can't really kind of do anything about that. Kanda wa alaykum as Is it haram for men to wear bright red? So there's a difference of opinion amongst the scholars with regards to this, within the Hanafi school themselves. Imam Shurun Bulali actually says between recommended and allowed. And others say it's considered makru tanzihi and some say makru tahrimi. Sure, not sure of the hadith or if it's recording the hadith. This is stories someone told me. Yeah, then best to avoid it. University loans no longer have interest. They now say that you'll pay back according to inflation. Is this still riba? Uh, I haven't looked into it, uh, but but technically, if you are paying back more than more than what you have, then it's technically is riba. But I haven't looked into exactly the terms and conditions, so I wouldn't be able to answer that one. Assalamu alaikum as -salam. Does a menstruating woman need to redo the salah she had an intention for but couldn't pray for some reason and then started menses at the time? So as long as she hasn't started the salat, she doesn't have to make it up. Yeah, so she has intention, doesn't necessitate anything on you. Also, in Tarawi, I have to do sajda sahob but I forgot and I just do salam. So then you, it's ideal you should repeat the two rakats again. I did repeat the two rakats again, unless it's going to confuse the masses. If it's something that was going to confuse the masses, then don't. Have you ever, what I would suggest is people who are leading tarawih, they need to learn the rules of fiqh of salat. Definitely. Very, very important to learn the fiqh. You know, my kuduri lessons, go through my kuduri lessons. And, you know, it's a lot of youngsters leading, leading tarawih, but I don't know how many of them are actually making mistakes and they're too embarrassed to, to kind of find the answer to. Have you ever been to a funeral service of a non-Muslim? In fact, I actually went to a Muslim's funeral today. May Allah forgive uh, Brother Ayub Kika. May Allah give him general effect. He was uh, one of the elders of the of the Birmingham community, Aston, especially in the Jama'at Tabligh. And mashallah, he did a lot of work uh, for his community. He used to actually have a business selling kulfis. right? So if you've ever ate kulfis in Birmingham, then you know that was from his, his business. So he passed away. So he went to the janazah this morning. Um, have I ever been to a service of a non-Muslim? Um, I don't think I have, you know. So is it allowed to attend one's crematorium? So I would say if it's generally a Muslim should avoid any act of worship which is against their faith. Right? They do not participate in that. If, for example, there was a close relative who is a non-Muslim and or a very, very close friend then attending such a gathering where they don't participate and they stand away from it, there's scope for that. So then the different way to calculate the time still fall under the view of the four Imams. So exactly the 15 degrees. I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying. Um, what could someone say to the non-Muslim to opt out of attending? I don't know. Just say you can't make it, unfortunately. Is anyone can help with this question? Is using deodorant spray permissible when you know the vapors can evaporate after touching your body and enter the mouth? Yes, you can. A scholar came from Egypt to the UK and was shocked at the amount of groups you have in the UK. The Dioban diversity really reason. I don't think unity is possible unless the madaris change. What's the difference between the Dajjal and Dabatul Ard? Uh, so two different names in it. Dajjal is obviously the name of individual. Dabatul Ard seems to be some creature that's gonna come from the ground. Do you have any advice for helping someone who has waswasa and kufr things? You need, you know, I would suggest, look, you need therapy. Honestly, if you have waswasa thoughts, you need therapy. What I would suggest is trying to contact uh, Sapiens Institute. So Sapiens Institute have a branch known as the, the, the Lighthouse Mentoring. Contact them. You can have free phone calls with them. Speak to them about it. They'll give you, inshallah, very good advice. So anyone who is suffering from waswasa, a lot of you guys, they're asking me questions, I'm curious, can I know they suffer from waswasa? Because they ask, continuously ask about purity, 
whether they're clean, whether their water is clean, whether this wudu is done. That's that's not natural to ask those kind of questions. So that shows there's something wrong, like mentally they have some issue. And that is goes back to what Swasada is. So what I would definitely say Abu Bakr is contact mentoring, uh, this Lighthouse Mentoring, Sapiens Institute, it's on their website, and s see what you can get with them. And if not, try to contact a guy called Sheikh Abdullah Misra. Sheikh Abdullah Misra. I know someone who's actually getting therapy done through him. And mashallah, it's really helping them. Uh, like really a lot helping them. So you need to get therapy. And what I would say, do not ask, you know, general questions to a scholar without telling them you really suffer from waswasa. Because a scholar is going to give you general answers and that's going to trigger your waswasa even more. Yeah, do not contact more than one scholar. Just ask one scholar your questions and tell them you suffer from waswasa and be very clear about it. Don't be embarrassed. Is using deodorant spray permissible when you know? Yes. Is local moon sighting established within the Hanafis or is both? So Hanafis have two opinions. The official position is global sighting. How should Sajda Sahub be performed? So I've actually got a video on this. So you can watch my video. If you go to my YouTube channel, uh, let me see if I can find the video for it. Uh, sajda, sajda Tilawa, Sajda Sahu. Straight. Yeah, so this is a video I have on Sajda Sahu. Inshallah, should help. Yeah, Allah. Okay, after joining, let me put this question on the screen. After joining the Jama'ah late, if I accidentally did one salam with the Imam at the end of the Jama'ah before standing, does that cancel my salat? No, it doesn't. If you forget Dua Qunud during with the salat, does that invalid the salat? What's an alternative Dua? So if you don't know what you're saying, you don't know how to recite it. If you don't know how to recite it, you can recite any du'a you want. If you do know it, then you should recite it. And if you don't recite it, then you do sajda sahu at the end. If I see a fasting person eating, should I remind them they are fasting? If you think that you know this would encourage them to stop, then yes, you remind them. But if you feel as though they are weak, and then you leave them alone. If a lady prayed her isha and delayed with her for later, but menses started between that time, should witr be made up after? No. No. So basically what the Hanafis say is, is that if menstruation happens before a woman has prayed her salat, then that salat is not necessary on her. Is a voice acting job, e.g. for video games, permissible for men and women? It all depends on, on the contract, on the exact dealing. So I wouldn't be able to give a specific answer. But generally the rule is, per se, the theoretically it'd be allowed unless it's something which is clearly against the teachings of Islam. Tahiyan uh, Hussein, what is the nisab of gold? How do I calculate gold? I can't different carat gold if I don't know. So what I would suggest is watch my, if any of you guys have not watched my crash course on zakat, definitely I would advise you guys to watch, watch, watch it. Right, inshallah, you're going to find it very beneficial. Yeah, on all these questions, inshallah, are answered in that. In that course, inshallah. So, crash course to zakat. So, tahiyan, watch this. Crash course to zakat. I've uh, noted more Hanafis heading to local moon sightings, even amongst the Do you see the future to be local? I think, yeah. I think I personally would like people to go towards local sightings. It's just easier. It seems more unifying of the the community of the UK. What do you guys think? How can you figure out which tariqa to join? Up to you. So remember this, look, you don't have to follow any tariqa, you just have to follow Allah and the Prophet Sallallahu teachings according to the experts, right? That's, that's what you have to follow. So tariqas are basically kind of like mentoring. It's like you want to lose weight, you want to go to the gym, you get yourself a private uh, tutor, who a trainer who helps you out. Right, shows you what to do. So he speeds up the way to get close to Allah. He kind of gives you all these good tips. And you become more responsible. So that's what tariqah is all about. Now what I would suggest is try to look for a tariqah that's easily accessible to you. One that is easily accessible, that you can speak to the mentor 
and about your situation. Don't go for any tariqa which is just an abstract tariqa and you don't really have any any sort of contact with with an uh, individual that you can get back a uh, feedback from. Uh, when they say to give zakat from qima, does it mean you find the qima first, then you give one fortieth, or do you find the ain first, then take? So, uh, what are you exactly talking about? Are you talking about gold, silver? Wait, wait, what are you exactly talking about? Uh, you're welcome, Tahiyan. Uh, Nelson, alaikum assalam. You're looking smashing. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. I just look a bit dazed today. All the white hairs in my beard. Jazakallah, may Allah bless you. My question is, can witr be prayed before tahajjud? Yes. My masjid does tarawi, then witr, then tahajjud. Yes. According to Hanafis, witr does not have to be at the end. Does not have to be the last salat. Hanafis say it's optional. It's good to have it at the end, but not necessary. Saqib alaykum as salam ahlam wa sahlam gold. So gold, it should be given from if you got the ain, you obviously give it from the ain. Or you have the option to evaluate it. So if you have the gold, then normally it's it's what we call scrap gold. Right? So the scrap gold, the value of the scrap gold, uh, you can use that. So you got the option there. Either you take from the ain or you take from the from the the value itself. According to Hanafis, you're allowed to give qima. Aisha El, but how can a female have direct access to a mentor sheikh? This is about tariqahs again. Yeah, so that's the thing. I think I think a lot of people get confused about tariqahs. They assume a tariqah is something you, every Muslim must do. Without a tariqah, you can never become a good Muslim. You can never gain closer to Allah. And that is true, totally false. Right? That is not true at all. Yes, tariqah is like if someone wants to lose weight. If there's two people that want to lose weight, one of them gets in contact with a personal trainer and one of them doesn't. Both of them can lose weight, but the one that's got the personal trainer will most likely be more productive, right? Because they've got someone to be accountable to. So the idea of the tariqah is that it's about accountability. It's about getting personalized. Otherwise, you can stay in the company of any scholar you want. You can follow like someone online and you listen to their advice and you act upon their advice. That's totally fine. It's called suhba. You can have suhba of anyone you like. Do we have to pray dhuhr after praying Jum'ah? No. Hakim, if wudu is broken midway performing wudu, then do you have to start from the beginning or carry on finishing wudu? If wudu is broken um, midway bef- performing wudu, you have to start from the beginning again. My question was different. How is the qima calculated? Is it qima of every 40th or the qima of everything? Both can differ if you have mixed types of gold. So it's a qima of so see look so let's say for example you have 100 grams of gold what you would do is you'd go online you'd find the value of scrap gold and you have to find how much how many carats of gold is it is it 24 carats is it 22 carats is it 20 18 etc and then it gives you the value of that per gram and then you multiply that by 100 and that gives you your your value and now you just work out two and a half percent of that so you divide it by 40. hope that helps how come a husband is permitted to forbid his wife from attending her own mother janaz- janaza? Allah, Allah, Allah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to only uh, answering questions first of all related to Ramadan. If you have, and if you have other questions, I'll answer those. But um, I'll give priority to the Ramadan ones. I'm going to go to Curious Cat now. See, and then Curious Cat, and I'm going to go off Instagram as well. So anyone on Instagram wants to continue, so I'm only, only going to be on for about an hour. Okay, so take care, people on Instagram. You can continue watching on uh, on uh, my other platforms. Okay. One second, guys. Let me just do this. My phone on charge as well. I'm actually going to do a bit of cycling as well, a bit later. So, first cycling of Ramadan. <laughs> right, 
Let's check out Curious Cat. Let's see what Curious Cat is saying. Okay, Assalamu alaikum. When a woman gets divorced once menstruation, does her idda start from the first menstrual cycle? Can a divorced woman on her idda go to Hajj? Okay, if a divorced man, woman who has irregular period, how does she count the three cycles? Uh, three, she gets period after two months. Okay, so wassalam, question number one. Okay, so let's just first of all this over here okay uh when a woman gets divorced once menstruation does her idda start from the next time the next period cycle okay number two can a divorced woman on her idda can she go hajj no and three, if a divorced woman who has irregular period, how does she count three cycles? If she gets a period after two, three months, or can she count three months? Uh, she needs to speak to a scholar. So please Google Sahim. I don't know who's asking these Dajjal questions. So please Google Kinaret level water levels. Okay, uh, ask these questions after Ramadan, guys. I can simply I think I have misunderstanding regarding the Yajuj Majuj movement. Ask after Ramadan. So, I'm sorry, this question may not be too long. Okay, so any du'as about how to have good intention, understanding, and result acting as worship? Uh, okay, I don't know. Uh, please advise about living with family members who don't respect the elder sister. You guys going through problems after Ramadan question, guys. Sometimes the Imam reads quickly, so along with the Imam, I re also read fast. By the okay, what's the difference between Salah? I don't think these are relevant questions for for Ramadan. Okay. Um... Uh, okay, is there any narration from Hazrat Ali regarding omitting Raf al Yadain? Any narration from Hazrat Ali omitting Raf al Yadain? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember any. What's the difference between saying Ramadan Kareem and Ramadan Mubarak? Same thing. Is it better? To, Kareem means like generous Ramadan and Mubarak means blessed. Is it better to pray Jama'at with the Imam for Witr or pray Witr after Tahajjud with the Imam? Someone started fasting according to the local moon sighting but planning to finish Ramadan in Saudi if they only fast 20, 28 days. Yes, then they have to make up at least one more fast. Yeah, one more fast. If you have 20 grams, 18 carats of gold and 20 grams, 24 carats of gold, then according to Shaykhain, you can give one gram of any gold. If you give by Qima, do you give cost of one gram, 18 carats, or total of the gold divided by 40? Yeah, total of the gold divided by 40. How can we prevent early burnout during Ramadan whereby we get too tired by the last thing? So don't overexert yourself. Take it easy. Yeah, have a structure. Take it easy. Do not overexert. I know some people don't know how to balance themselves. Why I would suggest is contact someone else. Some scholar or someone, show them, look, this is what I do. Is this okay for Ramadan, average person? This is my normal routine in the day outside of Ramadan. It's what I normally do. This is what I'm doing extra in Ramadan. So show the... I see, ideally is, because we don't live in an Islamic society, we don't have like a culture, Islamic culture, it's very difficult for us to sort of um, find the, the right balance. I follow Central Mosque this year. They follow local sightings. Is this okay with Hanafis? Yes, totally fine. I meant if I do know Dua Kunud but forget it during Salah and go blank lol, do I just read another Dua if any Dua is missed in... No, so if you forgot then fine, read any Dua. Yeah, go blank, that's fine. Read any Dua, inshallah. 
هل يصح بأن البلوغ ليس شرطا لوط المرأة وإنما يشترط أنها تحتمل الوط بحيث أنها لم تضر الوط حتى وإن لم تبلغ سن النعم هذا عند الجميع What's the difference between saying Ramadan Kareem? I live in Germany. We have Turkish masjid that offers 20 rakats tarawih, but they recite only last 20 surahs. Uh, while Arabic masjid offer 8 rakats, but complete whole Quran, where do you go? I would say try to read 20. Try to go to the 8 one, and then later on you play 12 yourself. Yeah, if you can. But if you find that it's difficult for you, then go to the 20 one. Is there any movement to get the ulama together to switch to? I don't think there is, you know. Is it makru to pray Zuhur after the time for Asr according to the Shafi'i, but still not according to the Hanafis? If there is a need to do so, then according to Hanafis, you can pray because this is the Sahibain's sahib time. Sahibain allow that. But then, if you are giving by Tima, you are potentially giving much more than you would have by Ain. Yeah, so this is, see, this is the issue. The later Hanafis have actually opted for the Sahibain's position on this. Sahibain's position. Yeah, so it's easier to work out uh, on this one. Otherwise, it's difficult to be able to use. Hanifa in today's time is very hard to be able to work out based upon the, the dinar and the mithqal system. Is a sunnah to say Ramadan? No, it's not. Uh, can I ask my mother's question here as it's urgent? Uh, no, because I'm going to be leaving in a bit and, and I want to prioritize for this. So yeah, I have to ask you personal questions, that's the thing. And I don't think it's right for, for you to put your personal questions on on the on the chat. Is it sinful to keep skip tarawih? Uh, if you do it in a way that is giving less value to tarawih, potentially it's close to sin. Yeah. How to calculate zakat on investments in stocks? My wife received gold in her wedding to avoid zakat. Can we name this gold to our daughter? Um, so, so the thing is, look, the rules of Islam are there for a reason. We have to understand this. And those rules that we have for Islam are supposed to be implemented by everyone. If we try to find loopholes in systems and we try to like take zakat and give it to this ownership and then we save ourselves giving zakat on it, then this is kind of like doing what Bani Israel did. So we shouldn't be doing that. If you do give your zakat to your daughter, it's hers now. It is hers and you can't touch it now. Um, so in that case, what I would suggest is you have to give, if it's your wife's zakat, gold, she has to give zakat on it. If she can't give her zakat now, she can give it later on, but she has to write down how much she's supposed to give. And then later on, when she gets that money, she can give. How do you calculate zakat and investment in stocks? So watch the video that I that I posted earlier. Crash course in zakat. I've actually mentioned in there how to work out. Yeah, I've actually mentioned in there. So you can check that, inshallah, Tawseef. Is, that, is it the case that according to Hanafi, if you swallow accidentally, you'd break your fast? Yes. Do I need to offer kafara for my old father skipping fast or medicines and my pregnant wife? Um, so if your father is unable to fast, then he has to, then he has to give uh, what we call fidya. For every fast he missed, he has to give, in, in the UK, about three or four pounds per fast. And if he has passed away, then you don't give anything on his behalf, if he never left a will behind. And as for your wife, if she's still alive, then she has to make up her fast later on when she's healthy. Alright, so answered all your questions, guys. Alhamdulillah. Alright, guys, so I am uh, going to finish it there. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much, guys, for tuning in. May Allah bless all of you guys and keep you happy. And inshallah, I'm going to be making a video on Surah Yusuf. I really wanted to make it today, but because I had to go for the janazah, I took a, a bit of time. So I wasn't really able to, um, to do that. So hopefully, inshallah. Um, next week, next hopefully next Sunday, I'm going to also do this live stream next Sunday, same time, inshallah. So make sure you tune in. If you have your questions, then you guys can uh, ask them. I've also got Curious Cat. So if you want to, say, for example, ask questions on the Curious Cat, it's, it's anonymous. Yeah, so this is the, this is the Curious Cat. Uh, let me just find the, the details for it. So this is the Curious Cat where you can ask your questions, inshallah. Those of you guys who are on 
Yeah, so there's a curious cat where you can ask, inshallah. And uh, hopefully, I'll save those questions up. If I get time in the week, I'll answer them. If I don't get time, then I'll keep them for next week, inshallah. Try to answer them. All right, guys. So if someone follows a timetable where Maghrib starts at 6, 6 or 7, but while they're outside, someone looks at a different message timetable where Maghrib is at 6 or 5 and they break fast, then inshallah, it's valid. So sometimes it happens, my fast is at a certain time, then I go to another mosque where I've got to talk. And their fast is at a certain time. So you just follow whatever whatever locality you're in, inshallah. All right, guys, everyone take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And make sure you hit the like button, guys. Hit the like button, everyone. Hit the like button, share my videos as well. And also, um, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a link. Uh, my teacher has a madrasa that he's building in Pakistan. I would really like it if you guys could support or you could share it with other people that could support this course. Uh, you know, the, the, the madrasa requires there's some building that's left and there's certain, um, you know, monetary, mon, 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 financial issues that are outstanding. So if you guys could do that for me, inshallah, that would be a, a, a great uh, reward, inshallah, in the Akhira Sadaqah Jariya for you guys as well. I will, inshallah, make the link this week. I'll put it up on Telegram. I'll put it up on my social media if you guys can support that course. And that's it, guys. Take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.